Okay, I thought I would do a quick video on using the L298N motor controller with a quick start board and also just using them with microcontrollers and in general. Now the first thing to know about this kind of controller is it's a piece of junk. Um, it's a really old technology. They have a lot of better H bridges nowadays. This is one of the better ones. Um, it costs almost 10 times as much though, but you don't get the same voltage drop across it. It's just much more efficient. So the first rule about using these is if you can, don't. But they're so cheap, it's hard to resist. And they, and they do work, as I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, so let's get started. Now the input on the, on the L298 is supposed to be two and a half volts higher than whatever you're using to control the logic, okay? So since I'm using 3.3 volts for logic right now, um, the motor, the, the voltage in should be at least 5.8 volts, okay? But I'm using a 5.3 volt pack instead and it actually works just fine. Now I'm using this pack. I actually have a better pack up here, but this one has more connections on it, connectors, so I can connect the ground um, to this rail here. Because you have to make sure you have shared grounds. So the 3.3 volts is actually coming from the quick start board, but the 5.3 volts is coming from the battery pack. So since I have two different voltage sources, I have to make sure there's a common ground between them. Okay, the motors are connected with here. I, I cut one of these wires so I can just hit and strip the end. So I just had bare wire to connect in here. The pins don't, con um, it's kind of tough to try to clamp down on those pins. It's better if you just have bare wire. And now it doesn't really matter which order you have these wires. There's, they're red and black, but it, that doesn't mean they're positive and negative. It just means one's forward and one's reversed. Electricity is actually going to go both directions. At one time, the red's going to be positive, and the electricity is going to flow, the current will flow this way, but other times the black will be positive and it'll flow the other way, depending on what the logic pins tell it to do. And so here we have the logic pins across here. Okay, there's the, uh, enable on either end, enable A, enable B, and then we have the direction pins in between. Now the two pins behind the enable are not enable pins. Those are five volt out. This little board has a five volt regulator. So the, the voltage coming in, as long as it's a reasonable amount of voltage, if, it, if you put too much in, it'll burn out the regulator. But this jumper here passes the electricity from the voltage in to the regulator. The regulator knocks it down to five volts, um, which you can use, which it, it uses to power the chip, but it can, you can also power low um, low current devices, five volt devices from this. And so there's the pin there and the pin there are also five volts. And right here is a five volt connection as well. And that's five volts out. Okay, as long as you have this jumper on here, you don't need to provide five volts. It will actually provide it to you. If you don't have that jumper, then you do need to provide five volts. But don't connect 3.3 devices to these five point five volt pins. You will very easily destroy whatever you're connecting them to. So just the front pins are input pins. This is where the Raspberry Pi guy really made a big mistake in my opinion and it really ought to fix this video. Okay, so just to show you how the circuit works, I'm just going to power it on with just voltage, okay? So I have the 3.3 volts on the red side, ground on the blue side, okay? So right now all of these logic connections are on ground, okay? The 3.3 volts is coming from the quick start board. So let's, let's move the input pin. Okay, first of all, let's see what happens if we enable um, motor A. This is motor A here. Let's enable it. Nothing happens because both of the input pins are low. So most the direction pins, whatever we want to call these, um, those are low, so the motor doesn't turn. 
we'll put the navel back low and if we put both of these high and now we put the enable pin high it still won't turn because these are both the direction pins are both the same we'll pull it low again now this time let's leave enable or input one high and input two we'll put low and now when we put enable high the motor turns Okay, and this motor happens to turn counterclockwise in the positive direction. Okay, we can switch, we can turn it off by bringing the enable pin low on again high. Now we can switch directions. If we bring this enable pin, this input pin low, it will stop. If we put this input pin high, it will switch directions. So that's one way you can test just to make sure your H bridge and your motor is working correctly. You can just connect the wires directly to a voltage high source and a voltage low source and you can kind of get the logic straight in your head by just doing it this way first okay so I'm going to set this back low enable A and we'll just turn on motor B let's do this one in reverse we'll put input 4 high and now enable high and these, if you'll notice, the wires on these are opposite. So the red and the black are switched. So it ends up being the positive direction on the motors are switched as well. Which is convenient in a robot because you want one wheel to turn the opposite direction of the other wheel. Okay, we'll turn this back low. Okay. Now, but we don't want to just have to connect wires to make our robot go forward or backwards. We want the microcontroller to do it for us. So I'm going to quickly, as I can, move these wires from this board onto the quick start, which I have a little label here to help me with find the pins. And up in my program, I have what pin is connected where. So I'm gonna start with enable B, and enable B connects to pin 19. 19 is behind 18. And then, and enable A connects to 16. Okay, so these six pins here connect to the six pins up front here. One thing I didn't mention is I took off these two um, jumpers from the board. The jumpers were behind, would connect the enable to the five point, the five volts behind it. And this is convenient if you're using this board to power a stepper motor. And, yeah, but we want to leave the jumper in place on the, to put the power to the regulator. Okay, so now we have the propeller connected. And in order to control this, we need to enter in Right now it's controlled through a serial terminal. And I will find the serial port, which is either four or 25. I'm gonna guess 25. Okay, and it says press any key to start. I'll press a key. Tells us the, the speed right now, zero on both motors. Gives me a little bit of a menu. So I'm gonna push A and then it'll ask me to input the speed of motor A. And right now the range is between negative 100 and positive 100. So I'm going to do 50. And there's the motor. Let's do A again. Let's go negative 100. I'll do A and zero and just because I can't hold two motors at once I'm going to do motor B now B negative 50 B 100 and let's see how slowly this will still turn as we give it less and less uh, uh, pulse width the duty cycle is, is less. So let's try 
B at 30%. Yeah, it's still moving, but slower. We'll try B at 20%. And B at 10%. Okay, at 10%, it doesn't move. So, okay, it was moving before, but before it came from 30 down. Okay, if I give it a little bit of a nudge, it will move. So, about 20% duty cycle is about the lowest we can have the pulse width modulation and still have the motor turn. And of course, it's very easy to stop. So this is why you really want to have encoders on your robot because then it can sense it how fast the motor is moving and adjust accordingly. So, okay, so one of these will close and I can turn it off by just pushing X and I'll turn both off. And one, I, the reason I chose the IO pins I did is because of the quick start board has these little LEDs. So let's see if I can do both of them at 50% duty and hold them at the same time. A, 50, B, 50. And here we see um, this LED here represents the duty cycle and this LED represents the duty cycle of the motor B. And these two LEDs represent the um, input pins. So this is um, it's, nope, this is motor A actually. Enable on motor A, input 1, input 2, enable motor B, input 1, input 2, input 3, input 4. And so you can see how these two LEDs are a little bit dimmer because these are constantly on but this is only a 50% duty cycle. And I just like to use the LEDs because then you can see the motor in action. And I will stop these and I will show you another example of using these motor controllers. As I mentioned, okay, one of these will control two motors. So on this robot, I have two of these. I have an H-bridge here, uh, well a dual H-bridge and a dual H-bridge here. And one quick start board in the middle. And this quick start board is actually being powered by the 5 volts coming off of one of these boards. So the 5 volt regulator is powering both the chip and the quick start board. And it's also powering, and then I think the other one is powering the radio control system here. Now these, these motors here have encoders to go with them. And so I have the encoders also connected to the quick start board as well as the radio channels connected to the quick start board and so the radio channels can receive the quick start board receives the, in, the pulses from the radio and so I can control it with the radio control system here and so if I push forward the robot will go forward back to back and if you can look on the quick start board as I move the motor around, you'll see the LEDs kind of light different amounts. And those are showing how the motors are being controlled, which pins are being set high. So even though these motor controllers are old and inefficient, they can still be a lot of fun. And I think that's about it for now. That's the um, L298N H-Bridge um, used with a quick start board.